Hello, my name is Ashley Emerson, and you're listening to Mary Bowser's Every Opportunity to Rise podcast. We're focused on creating more opportunity and making sure all of our residents know about that opportunity. Everybody, from Ward 8 to Ward 1, from advanced degrees to no degrees, from five generations to five minutes, has a fair shot. Today, I'm joined here with Robin McKinney, awarded resident of Historic Anacostia. Yes, yes. How are you? How are you today? I'm fine. I'm fine. Good. I'm so happy you're here. Mm -hmm. And we just really want to get into your story because it's such an inspiring story and it's motivating for me, but I'm sure for many of the residents out there. So if you just want to share your experience with homeownership and your path on your pathway to the middle class. Um, I first started out in one of the transitional shelters. Um, I'm a single parent of seven. Oh, wow. Okay. Native Washingtonian. Been here all my life. Okay. Um, graduated from Belusa Senior High School in 92. Um, Go Knights. Yes. So um, a situation that happened, my house had flooded and we had like 48 hours to leave the unit that I was staying in. So my seven children and I ended up being located and transferred over to one of the DC, DC shelters. At that time, I was working for um, D.C. public schools. I was a bus driver. Okay. And um, I have always dreamed to be a homeowner because of the opportunities and um, the things that they have here in the District of Columbia. So at that point, um, I worked closely with some people in the community to purchase my home. And the first question was, Robin, what about your credit? These are the barriers that I had in the past, and um, I had to take care of some things that I had. Okay. So what I did was um, I got in tune with HPAC, um, SUMS, because I was end up moving to their property, and they have a caseworker who pushed towards home ownership. So others might eat? Yes. Okay. So I stayed there for five years. In the process of staying there, I went to the First Time Home Buyers Program. They had a couple of classes down at the Art on Mississippi Avenue that's located in Ward 8. Um, I went to different other classes they had at HPAC. And then I also went to one that they had with the ACD. So you were focused and proactive. Very focused. Very okay. focused. Very focused. It was a little of a struggle, but um, I had to maintain. So the most struggle was me cleaning up my credit. Okay. When I first started out um, in the process of being a homeowner, my credit was like 495 And that was like in January. Of 2017. And by the time I went through the HPAC program of June 2017, my credit went up to 720. Wow. So, That's amazing. So you need to lead a 620 to start a process. And so I, would, I had a game plan at that point. How did you do that? How did you jump from 495 to 720? How do you do that? A budget plan. Um, once I contacted my caseworker and I told her that I was serious about home ownership because my rent that I was paying there and I had a Section 8 voucher at the time, um, my rent was like fifteen seventy five. Okay. And at that point, they knew that I needed to be a homeowner because they said my mortgage would be less than what I'm paying in for rent. And so we did a budget plan. Every month we would do a budget plan and um, we would figure out my expenses and the money that I had put aside to pay off my credit. And I contact Lexington Law Firm. Okay. Lexington Law Firm, I mean, even though they charge a fee, but it was, um, it's easy for people that was in a situation such as myself. So when I got my taxes in January of 2017, I saved my taxes and I used my tax money to pay off my credit. Because when you have credit, you have money. That's right. So, that's um, right. and that's how I was able to do it. So once a month, they charge you maybe $100 for maybe like three months. And that was it. At that point, they showed you how to um to do the letters. And I went back to HPAC and they walked me down to show me how to do it. And I went to MANA also. MANA was a big support system too. And so they showed me how to write the letters, dispute my items and things like that. And then I learned some things as far as with your bank account, making sure your bank account stay current, make sure you don't do overdraft or anything like that. Okay. And that would add points also into your um credit score. That's beautiful. I, I We hear stories all the time um how credit is a barrier and... Being able to go from the 400s to the 700 club is remarkable. Yes. Um, and it takes that commitment and those steps that you made, reaching out to to your banking institution, 
you know, calling the law firms, mm-hmm. getting the tools. And mm-hmm. I think that's something that residents need assistance on um, yes. to help get them there. So yeah. what, are, what are some of the resources uh, where people can kind of help you navigate that credit piece? Um, the credit piece, we had started something, um, a group of us called the 800 Club. Anyone who was paying 800 plus in rent living in the District of Columbia, and if you was working, we support each other towards home ownership. Okay. And with that being said, um, when you go to, um, I went through Latino Economic Development. That's who submitted my application for okay. HRAP. And they walk you through. So what they would do is they would target things that would stop you from moving your credit score forward. Like some people have student loans. That's, that's kind of hard. But they work for things as far as the federal programs and grants to help you get over that. You have to pay like a certain amount of money or some of it's forgiven. And so with that, we all supported each other and we came together. And that's how I was able to come over the bars as far as the credit situation. Um, and if for a minute, I still had my mindset as a renter. It takes a long time for you to actually get your mind set out of being a renter and know that you're going forward to home ownership and you need that support system. And so it was maybe about seven of us who bought a home at the same time. Okay. And I was the only support. one that was homeless. And so um, everyone else was more on the right track. So everyone gave me that support and they made sure that I didn't miss a meeting. That was in the community as far as any home ownership, any extra money I could have received. Like I was in a union. I've been in government for the last 15 years. So the money that was a kickback from that. So that was a big help also. That's really important to to highlight community and family and friends and neighbors that can help you guide you on the yes. pathway to home ownership. Yes. Because it's not it takes a village and we don't walk this walk alone. Yes. Um, and there are just some things that people know that you may not know or that you can share with others yes. in your experience. So thank you so much for doing that today. Yes. So what you talked a little bit about mindset, and, and I think that's important. What are some of the things that help people change their mindset from renter to homeowner? First of all, just knowing that you're a renter alone will want anyone to take advantage of a fair shot. Mm-hmm. Being a single parent and to pay that much in rent, I mean, you can be a homeowner. I think at some point the thinking needs to change so that you can know that you can become a homeowner. And I had to sit back and I thought about it. I said, well, I didn't understand at first as far as equity, things like that, Mm -hmm. becoming a homeowner. With me paying $1,500 plus in rent, that was kind of steep being a single parent and working every day with no other type of benefits besides the home, um, the HPAC, I mean, um, the Section 8 voucher program. But the apartment that was renting, I had a full bedroom and it rented market rent for $2,700 a month. Wow. which was impossible for me to pay. And it was really a struggle. It's crazy to say, but it's more easier for me to be a homeowner than a renter. And some people don't understand that. Some people are afraid of responsibility. Mm-hmm. But even being a renter, you still have responsibility. It's just no different. And sometimes when you say home ownership, the first thing people think about, what if something breaks? I don't have the money. I don't have this. I don't have that. And I purchased my home with being a single parent at the time. I was of only seven. of seven, single parent of seven, making $46,000 a year. And um, I tell anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do anything you put your mind to. And with the support of my kids. And when your household is stable, your kids does better in school. Mm-hmm. And that was the most important thing. They wanted to see my kids do better. So that was why I purchased my home. And now my mortgage, where I live, um, I came through the program. HPAC gave me like 80000 DHCD gave me another grant, maybe 106000 My principal loan balance, maybe 156000 something like wow, that. Wow, you're just shooting out those numbers. Right. And so <laughs> um, the, my, the purchase of my condo, I think maybe it was like 330 or 340 right? And um, right now my mortgage is only $873. Wow. Um, the condo association fee, 229 my electric may run me maybe about $70 a month. So if you do the math, it's still less than the $1,500 a month that I was paying in rent. So with that mindset and thinking, anyone, and I didn't never understand what people say, the grass is greener on the other side when you can't see. It. But once you have that support team to break everything down to you, Robin, this is what equity is. This is where um, if you want to send your child to college, 
I can take that money off my house and send my kids to college. And I made a promise to my kids that um, we will always hold the keys to the city. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. I think another piece of it is um, what you did around your tax income, your oh, income yes. tax yes. returns and refund. Um, my mom did the same thing when she got her refund. She, she's an amazing saver. And she would use that money mm -hmm. to then reinvest in the house or, yes. you know, a family vacation or things yes. like that. But just being able to save is really important because you have a big boost coming in. Yes. And sometimes people get a lot of money back. Um, and then we have a lot of uh, tax credit programs as yes. well. Yes. And so they could use that money. I always tell people the money that you have, it's not always meant to be spent. Sometimes mm -hmm. it used to be it needs to be invested. Yes. So it can grow. Yes. And home ownership is the absolute way to do that. Yes. And um, sometimes when we people get a lump sum of money like that, they may go buy a car or sometimes, you know, things like that. Um, Depreciating bring, assets. And a lot right? of times people don't realize you can't do that. Like I knew that I couldn't buy nothing. Like that year, my kids didn't get anything for Christmas. They didn't understand. And they was always kind of upset. And I was like, this is y'all Christmas present right here. This mm -hmm. is what I was saving for. You know, and it took them a while to realize after moving from shelter to shelter, um, subsidized and subsidized units to realize, hey, we're homeowners now. And that's what we're going to live like. That is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm really inspired by your story. Mm -hmm. And I know so many others out there need to hear that they have a support system. Yes. Um, not not just the government, but a neighbor. Yeah. Right. Because you're in historic Anacostia. Tell me about your neighborhood. Oh, wow. Actually, it's, it's kind of funny. When I was in transitional housing, when I first became homeless, the first place I moved to, I lived on Talbot Street and I was a renter at the time um, through the, um, the program, you know. And so at that time, I had met my neighbors and I would be outside planting flowers and stuff. And one of the neighbors said, um, Robin, I'm not being funny. She said, why are you planting flowers? Why are you doing all these things? And this is not your house. She said, you need to buy your house. I said, you're right. You're right. You're right. I said, well, she said, stop planting on the flowers. But I just was, you know, she said, I don't want you to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's um, kind of funny because um, when they first built the condos where I live, Jackie Ward and the other neighbor had called me and was like, hey, Jackie Ward was my own realtor. Okay. Yes. So she called and said, hey, Robin, they're building some condos. Um, you should try to come back to the neighborhood. And she's still my neighbor. So some people I already knew when I lived there because I'm always engaged. And But my neighbors that I have now, the new neighbors, they are wonderful, wonderful, especially my neighbor that lives downstairs for me. Um, One time a situation happened and I wasn't home and she's like, Robin, Robin, Robin. You know, she would call to check on me and, you know, we changed. So we have something called a buddy neighbor. The okay. buddy neighbor, each one of us have a buddy neighbor. So if a crisis or something happened, that buddy neighbor can enter your home. Say if it's a fire, being so we're all connected as a unit. If it's a fire or something happened, that, like I have a dog, Blue Beth. So if something happened, Blue Beth is the fire. They can get her <laughs> out the house, you know. So we kind of connect with someone who may have um a disabled child in the house mm -hmm. or something like that. Or um say, like, I sleep hard. Like, you know, we check on each other like that. Hey, Robin, you know, something just happened. We just, you know, we need to get out the house where she can enter my home and I can enter her home as well. So it's, it's called as the buddy support system that you need also. Sometimes when people, you know, get new jobs or they get a new home, things they get new, they feel like you don't need that buddy support. But actually, that's when that buddy support is really needed. Right. Exactly. To help you prosper and just to help you learn the landscape of your new right. situation. But I think it's important for, for people to... You had foresight. You had clairvoyance. Yes. You, you said, I want to be here. I want to be in this neighborhood yes. and I'm going to make the moves to get what I need to get to be here. Yes. You did that. No excuses. I live my life with no excuses. There's no reason. I mean, the tools are here and I was given the tools. I picked them up. I used them. I used my, I worked very, very hard. And um, I can say now that I'm working at DOES and I just, Passed one of the certification to be a vacant building inspector, one of the number programs to help out oh, to bring wow. a little more income in the house Good. with DCRA. So everything is here. And if I can take advantage of it, a single parent of seven, and not only a single parent of seven, I raised my granddaughter, which made eight. And she's still with me right now. So okay. it's just, it's just, you know, I just thank the mayor for doing a fair shot. You know, a lot of cities and states don't have these type of programs. DC have one of the best 
programs, sometimes for a school, where for the work, anything you want to do is, is nothing that can stop you. And that I hear that time and time again, you know, we go from city to city to city and nothing is in comparison to, to DC. Um, And as residents, as natives, as people that has been here, we have to take advantage of those programs and get connected. And when we get connected, we got to connect somebody else. And that's what we do. That's what we call it. Um, That's why we started the 800 club and we, try to go out and identify. I get phone calls, inboxes all the time about home ownership. And people say, well, Robin, I'm paying, I mean, $1,700 I mean, $1, a month for rent. And it's a it's subsidized programs because of the fact the market rent is so high. And I'd be like, well, let's break something down. You need to be a homeowner, you know. How can they find more about the 800 Club? That. That's, that's a um, network, something that I started. Okay. Up. I'm forever coming up with something. Let's hear and, about um, it. The 800 Club, again, is a program, um, well, not a program, a group that I put together. Anybody that's paying $800 or more in rent, living right here in the District of Columbia, if you're um, working at least two years, um, we try to start you off. You have a credit score at least about 560 Okay. It makes it a little easier. And we support you. We um, go down the list to see what you need to do, what you need to fix, things like that. Because if you're paying eight hundred dollars plus a month in rent, you could be a homeowner. Remember, my mortgage is only eight hundred and seventy three dollars a month. And remember, my house is um when I pay for like three forty. Now my house is already built as equity. I'm like to four hundred and some thousand already. Yeah. That is my house's worth. And, and you're talking about someone coming from being homeless. Um being in the shelter on New York Avenue, leaving from there, living in some transitional homeless program. I stayed there for five years and I had a plan and I used my plan and I took advantage of my plan and the network and the system I had around me. That is amazing. I'm mm-hmm. I'm all about this 800 Club. Yes. This is this is what's needed. Again, it's the network, it's the community, it's yes. neighbors. Yes. It's reaching out. Yes. Um we we definitely want to thank you so much for just no being worries. here today. No worries. And just sharing your story. Um, how can people get in contact with you if, if about the 800 Club if they want to be a um, part of they it? They can get contact me. Um my email address is Robin R O B I N that S as in Sam, that McKinney, M-C-K-I-N-N-E-Y at, G- at gmail.com. I'm also a notary. I does that every day for the community for free. You can reach out to me because of that if you need that done. And that helps out a lot too with the mm-hmm. community, you know, because I know at the end I had to get a lot of papers notarized. Right. Right. In that process, it's a lot of paperwork. Yeah. But if you have someone there to support you and hold your hand and yes. walk through with yes. you and you're doing this all for free. Yes. Wow. Yes. That, somebody did it for me. That's DC values. Yep. Somebody did it for me. Yeah. That is what we are. That's what that's we right. do, right? That's right. Um, so I I really want to thank you for being here today thank and you. just keep inspiring, keep going, keep motivating. Thanks for listening to the EOTR podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this episode. And join us next time as we learn more about programs and resources available in the district. You too can join the conversation by using hashtag EOTRPodDC or email us at EOTRPod at DC.gov.